Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the MediQual plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about library components. And what I mean specifically by that is some of these components that are drawn within the wall plugin, specifically these hangers, are actually files, or SketchUp files, I guess you could say, or components that are pre-modeled and then are um, basically inserted within the model when uh, you know one of these hangers is uh, selected. So anyways, um, I think it would be very instructional that I go into that a little bit more, dive into the nuts and bolts of how the system actually works, and then that will allow people to actually uh, more efficiently add their own uh, hangers and other hardware that they want to add into the wall plugin. So to begin with, let's, uh, I've gone ahead and modeled you know, these three little beams here, thrown some hangers on them. Um, let's go ahead and edit this one here. Um, just want to show you guys, first of all, what I've done recently. So with these hangers for the uh, beam library, I've actually added in a whole bunch lately, mostly these HGUS series, which is the heavy girder series. You'll notice now when you drop down this box, I mean, you've got all kinds of options for different things, but um, yeah, I think there's like 85 different hanger options or, well, it's not just hangers, it's actually uh, column caps and other uh, hardware. But yeah, there's quite a few options for hardware here that you can select from. So anyways, um, yeah, let's go ahead and select one. So we'll put one on the end of this beam here. Let's select one of these new ones, uh, H55, let's say a 14 on the end here. So it's a slightly different, larger one than the, the other one. And you can see now, as soon as it updates, here's the HGUS 12. And then over here, we've got ourselves an HGUS 14. All right. OK, so like I said, these are low poly pre-modeled um, components that I've created um, specifically for the wall plugin, primarily so you guys don't have to go out and you know grab this stuff and bring it in on your own and then add them in. I mean, this just saves, hopefully saves you a lot of time and also, I like the fact that they're low poly and they're uh, carefully modeled, you know, so that, first of all, they're dimensionally accurate. And also, um, they're always going to be solids. Um, and that helps when, you know, I'm doing Boolean subtractions and other things so that it can properly subtract away uh, pieces and parts of these uh, pieces of hardware if need be. Anyways, um, so let's go ahead and dive into this here. Um, what I'm going to do is minimize this window for a second and open up my windows here now i'm running on a windows 7 machine older machine i'm actually running on this machine specifically because this is the machine that i do testing of the uh, 2017 all the way through 2023 uh, with sketchup and then for 2024 actually it doesn't install into windows 7 i don't think or i don't think there's there's some compatibility issues there anyway so i've basically had to create a new machine for uh, running Windows 11 that I can test Windows 2024 on, or, or sorry, SketchUp 2024. But anyways, um, it, you'll notice here the path um, on the Windows machine. It's going to be users, and then your username, and then app data, and then roaming. Okay, so the administrator is just my username, but it could be anything other than administrator, whatever username is. So when you get into this file or folder, sorry, you're going to notice, you know, there's all these different programs here have their separate folders and the two that you really want to be concerned with is the SketchUp folder and this one here called Medeek and we'll jump into the Medeek one here in a little bit but let's start with the SketchUp one so if we click on that the first thing you'll notice is you've got all the different versions of SketchUp installed that you might have previously or or currently installed on your machine um, in this case we're going to deal with SketchUp 2017 just click the SketchUp folder click plugins Okay, so now we're in here and we can see all the plugins that we have installed or extensions. Um, we're going to jump into the wall extension and then we are going to jump. Okay, so now this is where it gets interesting. Notice we've got quite a few what I call library folders. Okay, so these ones here, library beams through library posts, these uh, five folders. Now these contain the custom libraries for the beams, columns, headers, materials and posts um, these actually do not contain any components they're just for the custom material library and the other custom libraries so basically if you go into each one of these 
for instance, let's go into the beams, you're going to notice that there's a text file. Sometimes there's a metric one. Sometimes um, there's going to be two of them usually. But um, And if you click on this, you'll notice here that it's just a simple text document with these lines that look kind of like they're separated, delineated by vertical bars. Okay, so there's no components in these libraries, and um, but again, you can use these. We'll have to dive into these on another video, but basically, you can configure things manually if you want uh, outside of the plugin. Um, it, but it's a whole nother topic for another day. Okay, so the one that you want to worry about is this library subfolder. Now in the library subfolder, you're going to see a, a whole bunch of other subfolders. And this is where you can put your custom components. Okay. And let's go ahead and today we're going to deal specifically with the hanger subfolder. Now you can put windows, doors, garage doors, casings, a bunch of other things in, into these each of these folders. One thing I will warn you though is that if you're going to do that, make sure that you do not include non-alpha numeric characters in the names. Um, if you put a space in commas, uh, single quotes, double quotes, that sort of thing. Um, typically, sketch, not so much SketchUp, I think, but um, JavaScript in the HTML menus gets confused. Okay, so we just want to avoid those. You can use underscore, and now you, with the uh, hangers, you can actually use a period as well. But yeah, try to restrict it to alphanumeric characters only. Okay, so in here you'll see that those 85 hangers that I was talking about that are available to you are all right here. Okay, so every one of the little models is is right here in this folder. Okay, and you can get in here, you can actually modify any of these, and so if you want to have them, um, uh, you know, change in some way or, or customize somehow, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually is I've gone ahead and just grabbed, um, well actually let's do this. Let's see if we can find the HU612 hanger. I think that's the one I was going to use as an example. Okay, so here's a HU612. I'm just going to pull this folder over here. I'm going to copy this, put that right here. Okay, and then I'm going to rename this guy. Okay, I'm just going to name it Red. Okay. Yeah, actually, it renamed it there. Okay. Uh, why did it do that? Oh, because I've already been. I already had a red. Okay. Well, that's fine. We've got one right here. All right. Same same file. I was just testing it earlier. Okay. So now I've created this whole new file. Essentially, I've just I've just duplicated the HU612 uh, SketchUp file, and by renaming it, I've, I've essentially created a copy. I'm just going to uh, copy that into this folder. Now, as soon as I do that, um, what's going to, well, actually, before I do that, let's, before I do that, sorry, um, I'm going to, I want to edit this, okay? So I'm going to show, I'm going to show you guys what those look like. So let's go ahead and um, save this file, and we're going to open that file right there. So let's find our HU612 red. Okay, so here is an example of one of these um, many components opened up. Now, notice the placement and notice carefully the orientation with regards to the axes. So it's going to be symmetric about the y-axis, the green axis. And notice that I have this hanger facing this way toward the positive y-axis. And also that you know these faces where it's going to butt up against the supporting beam or whatever is flush with the origin and also the bottom of this particular hanger is uh, flush with the z or uh, the zero plane for the z-axis right because you want everything to line up when you when it brings these hangers in Okay, so anyways, that, that's very important that you make sure your positioning and your orientation is correct for any of these hangers or any other hardware, actually, that you bring in, doorknobs, windows, doors, etc. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just change the color of this, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and save that file. Okay, and like any of these colors and... Um, layers or anything that you add into this when it gets imported in if i remember right it will bring all these in so just be aware of that when you create your um, custom components that you want to have brought in
by the plugin. Okay, so we've saved that. And let's go ahead and open back up that previous file we had. And while it's doing that, I am going to... Let's see here. Let's see, where did we put that file? Okay, so that file is right there. So yeah, I'm just going to take and drop this... Um, copy this thing, just drop it right in there. I can cut, cut it if I want, copy, whatever, it doesn't matter. So now you notice that I've got 86 items added in here. I've just added this new colored um, hanger, right? Okay, so go ahead and just bring that over there and let's go ahead and load up this file. And let's go ahead and edit this beam. All right, and when we do that, and we'll notice notice that you know the, the list is quite long so it's, you know it's you got to be aware that you're going to have a lot of things listed here but right there you can see that the new hanger is listed in the available hangers so let's go ahead and select that we'll hit update and there you go so we've got ourselves our new custom hanger that we've added to our component library for hangers and we're, we can go ahead and use that now and it'll show up in the menus. So that's really all there is to it. Um, you know, you can add as many uh, custom hangers as you like into that, uh, into that folder, that's that library. And, um, and you can name them whatever you want. It, like I said, just keep it alphanumeric as much best you can and then you should be fine. So again, there's a number of um, uh, folders here this one called system, um, I'll probably have to get into that one later, but basically it's kind of a system folder that is used and you know these, any of these items in here, there's only one of course, but can be edited as well. Um, so yeah, um, really that's all there is to the libraries, um, component libraries, they're all within this library folder in the wall plugin and then within each subfolder is uh, the different uh, categories that need to be um, accessed by the plugin as it's running. So anyways, um, I think that pretty much sums up what I wanted to discuss today. Um, bottom line is you have the ability to add in uh, whatever custom components that you would like and then uh, the plugin should be able to handle those and utilize those uh, for you. So. Again, thank you guys for all your updates and um, uh, feedback that you've given me and uh, all the uh, you know suggestions, of course, that uh, get me to get things done. And again, if you ever have any questions, um, feel free to reach out and email is usually the best option for me and uh, I will do my very best to uh, expedite things. So thank you.